Amen. God bless you. What a great, great song. If that doesn't get you ready to worship, I don't know what will. Let's take our Bibles now and let's turn to 1 John chapter 5, verse 13. We're going to read down to the end of this letter, from verse 13 down to verse 21. Let's read it together. If you're there, would you say amen? These things I have written to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life, and that you may continue to believe in the name of the Son of God. Now this is the confidence that we have in Him, that if we ask anything according to His will, He hears us. And if we know that He hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we have asked of Him. If anyone sees his brother sinning a sin which does not lead to death, he will ask, and it will give him life for those who commit sin not leading to death. There is a sin leading to death. I do not say that he should pray about that. All unrighteousness is sin, and there is sin not leading to death. We know that whosoever is born of God does not sin, but he who has been born of God keeps himself in The wicked one does not touch him. We know that we are of God, and the whole world lies under the sway of the wicked one. And we know that the Son of God has come and has given us an understanding that we may know him who is true, and we are in him who is true, in his Son Jesus Christ. This is the true God and eternal life. Little children, keep yourselves from idols. And all God's people said... Father, we ask you to bless your word today. Father, as we're making it down here towards the end of this letter, help begin to answer our questions that we have after reading these texts. Lord, in the coming weeks, as we bring this down to the end, let us remember the heart of it all. Your Son, Jesus. We must believe in Jesus. And Lord, we pray, Father, if there's anybody here who's not put their faith in Jesus, We pray, Father, that today they would, before it's too late for all eternity. Lord, uh, bless this message, we pray. Use it for your glory. Use it to draw us closer to you, we pray, and ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. So, we've come now here to the final section. And we're not going to, you know, finish it today, but we're in the final section of this little letter of 1 John. And if there's anything John wants to leave us with here, it is assurance. John wants to leave us with assurance. This man, John, who walked with Jesus and talked with Jesus for three and a half years during his earthly ministry, not only by his side as he was dying on the cross, but also saw him alive and well after his resurrection, and followed him until the very last moment when Jesus ascended up into heaven out of his sight. John was there every step of the way. He knew Jesus, and he wants us to know Jesus as well. And so, uh, the reason he wrote this letter of 1 John is so that we might know with great assurance and without a doubt if we're in a right relationship with Jesus Christ or not. Do you know that you're saved? That's that's the question. Do you have assurance that you're saved? We want to know that for sure. John wants us to know that for sure. I heard a story this week about a very elderly man who was going into the hospital for heart surgery. And he just happened to have a son who is a world-renowned heart surgery. And it's not always the, the practice thing, but he insisted, this elderly man who needed the heart surgery, insisted that his son be his surgeon, that he do the surgery. And so his son agreed, and the hospital administrator signed off, and, and his son agreed. And the man came, from the, came to the hospital. He, he got checked in. He's in the bed waiting for the medical crew to come pick him up and take him back to the surgery room. But just a little while before they got him, he asked for his son to come in and talk with him. And so his son came in to talk with him. 
And he knew that his dad was probably getting nervous, maybe thinking about backing out. He came in the room. He said, Dad, I'm going to take good care of you. Uh, I, I'm going to do my very best. And his dad says, I don't doubt that. I just, you know, I want you to do your very best and take good care of me. He says, I just want to tell you something. If for some reason that this doesn't work out and I don't make it, I just want you to know that your mother is going to move in with you and your wife after I'm gone. He wanted a little insurance to back up his assurance of his son's care for him. And as that story goes, our assurance is in the Son. And the insurance of our assurance that we find in God's Word and here in the book of 1 John is what Jesus did for us at Calvary. That's what it's all about. When, it, when you come down to it, you take everything John has been telling us here, and it all comes down to the cross of Jesus and what He did for us there on that cross. So, um, if I could just encourage you this morning to begin living in the joyful assurance of what God has, not, not how your life's going to work out, if you're going to make it, but if I, could, if I could encourage you to live your life in the joyful assurance of what God has already done for you, what He has already given you, it's a done deal. You don't have to go through your life fearing that you might not make it, that you might not have it. All through this letter, John has been trying, he's been teaching us how we can know that. We can know that. If you're not truly saved, John wants to know you're not truly saved. He wants you to know that. And he doesn't want to give you any false confidence or, or false hopes. But if you are saved, John doesn't want you to just think you're saved. He doesn't want you to just hope you're saved, but he wants you to know with absolute assurance that you're saved. Now, the last couple of weeks as we went through that text, you know, there was a theme through that text, and it was that of witness and testimony and evidence. How many of you remember that? From God bless both of y'all that you both remember that. Anybody else remember that? Come on, let me know. Okay. Witness and testimony. The witness of God concerning His Son, Jesus Christ. And, and that's as we went through that text, we saw that word witness again and again. We saw that word testimony a couple of times. It was about evidence, and it, was, it had to do with the water and the blood, and we talked about that. We saw that word over and over again. Well, as we go through this text, the theme is assurance, and so we're going to come across the word know seven times. Not think, not hope. But we're going to come across the word no. You know this. This is something you don't have to guess at. You don't have to hope so. You know it's true. That's the word we're going to find. We're also going to find the word true. We're going to find the word evident. I mean, we're going to find the word confidence. We're going to find these words over and over again that speak to our assurance as believers. And John wants us to live in the joy of knowing without a doubt that we're saved and that we're headed for heaven. Isn't that good news? Amen. Amen. I want to know that without a doubt. And that's what John... So John's going to show us here as we go through this text today and over the next few weeks, five truths that have to do with the assurance of our salvation. So the first thing we're going to notice here in this text, we're going to notice the assurance of eternal life. John is going to help us with the assurance of eternal life. So we look at verse 13. That's where we're going to kick it off this morning, working down the last section of 1 John chapter 5. He says, These things I have written to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, that you may what? Know that you have eternal life. Not hope so, not guess so, not think maybe. There's a glimmer of hope, but you may know that you have eternal life, and that you may continue to believe in the name of the Son of God. As we look at verse 13, as we look at this verse, there are three things we need to understand about it as we, before we can kind of move on through this passage. And so the, the first thing we want to understand is who is John writing to? Who is John 
writing to here. And, and, he, and he makes that very clear here at the beginning of verse 13. He says, these things I have written to you who, what? Believe in the name of the Son of God. Right? He's written this to the... And, and just stop right there because this is the key. Believing in Jesus Christ, the Son of God, is the key to everything John's talking about. If you don't believe in Jesus... You're not saved. It's that simple. If you remember towards the end of our text that we studied last week, remember what John said. He who has the Son has life. He that has not the Son of God does not have life. It's very simple to understand. And he's talking here to those who believe. If you don't believe in Jesus Christ, you're not saved, and none of this applies to you. You shouldn't be assured and you shouldn't be comfortable you shouldn't be at peace about your eternity because you don't believe in jesus christ but if you believe in jesus christ you can know you have eternal life if you're not saved none of this applies jesus christ god's son that he sent from heaven is the only way to heaven that's what john's been talking to us about all the way through this little epistle of first john but when the bible tells us that we must believe in Jesus Christ. There's lots of talk about what that means to believe in Christ. And it's more than just deciding that you believe in your, your mind. It's more than just intellectual belief. It's more than just saying, I believe the facts. I believe Jesus did these things. Because James tells us in James chapter 2 that even the demons believe and they tremble. Okay, Anybody can believe the facts. But believe, when it talks about believing in Christ, when the, when, when the Bible and when John here talks about those who believe in Christ here, the word believe comes from the Greek word pistuo. pistuo. And uh, let me say it real carefully. Pistuo. And it, to, to, to have faith, this, this means it speaks of someone who has faith in and entrusts their eternal spiritual well-being to him to trust in jesus for your eternal soul that's what faith means it doesn't mean you just believe what he did but you entrust your eternal soul into his hands it means you're depending on jesus for your salvation you're not depending on your own good works you're not depending on the good things you've done to earn your way in. You're not depending on your religion. You are depending on Jesus. All your hope of being rescued from hell and being accepted into heaven, it all rests in Him. It rests in Jesus. That's what believe means. It's the same word that faith comes from in the New Testament, and it's the, the word believe. When it says believe, it means to have faith. So he's speaking to those uh, the, he says here in verse 13, these things I have written to you who believe in the name of the Son of God. That's who John's writing these things to. Not just to those who say, I believe it happened. I believe what he did for us on the cross. Uh, I, I believe that in my mind, that it's true, that it happened. It's more than that. This is for those who are depending on Christ and trusting in what He did for us on the cross as our only hope of ever seeing heaven. That's what it means. To and that's who, for those of you who believe Jesus did what He did at Calvary to save us, and that's your only hope. And you put your trust in Him, John's writing to you today. And those at Ephesus that he was writing to that believe that, that we're trusting in Jesus for their salvation, that's who he's writing to. So do you believe he's your only hope of salvation? Do you trust him as your own, only hope of salvation? This message is for you. You can know that you have eternal life. Second thing we want to understand here in verse 13 is what has John written to us? What has John written to us? You, you, now that we understand who John has written to, we need to take a moment and remember what he has written to us. He says, these things I have written to you who believe in the name of the Son of God. What things have you written? Well, he's talking about all the things that John has written since the beginning of 1 John. If you remember all the way back in the beginning, he started out just preaching the gospel to us. And he's telling us this guy who was with Jesus, 
He's telling us what it was like when Jesus was here. He says, that which was from the beginning, which we've heard, which we've seen with our eyes, which we've looked upon, which our hands have handled concerning the word of life. John's telling us that Jesus, he's talking about the very real Jesus who lived and breathed, the very real physical presence of Jesus. He was in a body of flesh living among us. That's what John started out. And he goes on down, and he's, you know, when he says, these things I write to you that you may know you have eternal life. There's lots of things throughout 1 John that John has told us. A lot of things he's told us that have to do with us knowing we have eternal life. In 1 John 1, 7, he told us, if we walk in the light as Jesus is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus Christ, His Son, cleanses us from all sin. That's how we know we have eternal life. In chapter 1 and verse 9, He said, If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That's another one of those things He's telling us so that we can know that we have eternal life. In chapter 2, verse 1, He said, my little children, I write unto you that you sin not. But if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father. If you mess up and you do the wrong thing, we have an advocate, a, a lawyer who stands before the Father. An advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and He Himself is the propitiation for our sins. He's the, he's the one who paid the price for our salvation. Uh, that's another one of those things He's told us so that we may know we have eternal life. In chapter 2, verse 23... John said this, he said, Whoever denies the Son does not have the Father either. He who acknowledges the Son has the Father also. Therefore let that abide in you which you heard from the beginning. If what you heard from the beginning abides in you, you also will abide in the Son and in the Father. And this is the promise He has promised us, eternal life. And so that's another one of the things He's told us in chapter... <coughs> Chapter 3, verse 1, he says, Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us that we should be called the children of God. In chapter 3 and verse 16, he said, By this we know love, because He laid His life down for us. And we also ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. In chapter 3 and verse 23, he said, This is His commandment, that we should love uh, that we should believe on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, His Son, and love one another. In chapter 4, verse 9, he says, This is the love of God. In this, the love of God was manifested toward us, that God sent His only begotten Son into the world, that we might live through Him. In this is love, not that we love God, but that He loved us <clears throat> and sent His Son to be the propitiation for our sins. Beloved if, beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. In chapter 4, verse 15, John said, Whoever confesses that Jesus is the Son of God, God abides in him, and he in God. And we have known and believed the love that God has for us. And then at the beginning of chapter 5 and verse 1, John said these words, Whoever believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. And everyone who loves Him who begot also loves Him who is begotten of Him. In other words, in chapter 5, verse 1, whoever loves the one who begot, whoever loves the Father who begot Jesus the Son also loves Jesus the Son who was begotten of the Father. You can't love the, the Father without loving His only begotten Son. That's what John makes clear. And then chapter 5 and verse 6, remember that little section we studied, verses 6 through 12. We studied it over the last two Sundays where it talks about, you know, the water and the blood. This is he who came by water and blood. I believe this is the most important of the things that John's been telling us because he's talking about the witness of the Father. This is God's testimony concerning his Son that He sent to us, this is how we know that we have eternal life because God sent the Son. He says, this is He, starting in verse 6, this is He who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ, not only by water, but by water and blood, and it is the Spirit who bears witness because the Spirit is truth. 
He told us in chapter 5 and verse 9, he said, If we receive the witness of men, the witness of God is greater. This is the witness of God, which he has testified of his Son. He who believes in the Son of God has the witness in himself. He who does not believe God has made him a liar because he's not believed in the testimony that God has given of his Son. And this is his testimony, that God has given us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. He who has the Son has life. He who does not have the Son of God does not have life. And so these are the things. And I believe this last section of it is the most important part of what John's talking about. I, I, and that's why he, why he goes into that here in uh, verse 13 where he says, I, I write these things to you that you may know that you have eternal life. These things are the things John has been writing to us about all the way from the beginning of 1 John chapter 1, verse 1. And everything that he's written to us has to do with the gospel of Jesus Christ who came to pray, pay the price for us on the cross of Calvary and save us. And everything John tells us about this gospel shows us that this gospel is more than just some religious experience. It's more than just some inspirational tale. It's more than just some prayer you repeat. This gospel is real and it accomplishes something great in us it saves us from hell. It delivers us from sin. It rescues us from the world. It crucifies our old sinful man. It makes us a new creation in the image of Christ. It adopts us as children into the family of God. It fills us with the presence of God's Holy Spirit. And it gives us the ability to love like God loves. That's the gospel that John's been telling us about in this letter. And so we know who John has written to, to those of us who believe we're depending on Jesus Christ for our salvation. And we know what the things were that he has written to us, everything in this letter that points to the life-changing, soul-saving power of the gospel message of Jesus Christ. And now we need to understand a third thing, and that is why. I forgot to put up my second point, but why? has John written these things? Why has John written these things? In verse 13, look at it again with me. John gives us two, reason why, two reasons why he's written these things. He says that you may believe, says, excuse me, that you may know that you have eternal life. These things I have written to you who believe in the name of the Son of God that you may know, first of all, that you have eternal life. Like I said a moment ago, I believe the most important part of what John's talking about here is what we just studied about from verses 6 through 12, the last couple of weeks, where John points to the water and the blood, the spirit and the water uh, and the blood, which speaks, the, the water which speaks of his physical birth and, and his physical life. Uh, it speaks of the very, the, the blood which speaks of the very violent death that Jesus suffered, experienced on the cross to pay the price for our sins, the Holy Spirit who testified all through his life from the time he was born of water out of his mother's womb to the time of his water baptism when the Spirit descended and lit upon him like a dove through all the miracles that he worked and how the Spirit also testified during the, the crucifixion where he bled and died and the hearts of those men who witnessed it, the centurion and those who were with him, uh, all, they witnessed all the miracles that took place as he was dying on the cross and they were convinced, they said, surely, this was the Son of God because the Holy Spirit convinced them. The Spirit testified through His death when He bled on the cross. The water and the blood and the Spirit. This is the witness of God that He's given concerning His Son. And I believe everything John wrote in this letter was intended to help us know that we have eternal life. But I believe this was the most important part of it. Because it's all about what Jesus did for us. It's all about how God shows us that. It's God's testimony to us what Jesus did. Okay? So now take good notice of this. Because here's where we bring this down to meet us. Take good notice of the fact that when God testifies to you and me why we should know that we're saved, why we should know confidently, why we should have assurance that we have eternal life. 
It all points to everything that Christ has done. And he speaks about nothing that we have done. Nothing you and I have done. Do you get that? Do you understand that this morning? This is why you and I should be so glad. I'm so glad the gift of eternal life does not depend in any way upon what I have done. Amen? Because if it were up to me, I would have failed. Because I have failed. I have failed. And, and, and I would not have eternal life if it were up to me. But, thanks be to God, it's by the grace of God, and it all depends on Jesus Christ and what He did. His perfect, sinless life and the perfect offering He gave of Himself when He laid down His body down as a sacrifice for my sins on that cross. Thank God He's the one who accomplished it because I would have never been able to accomplish it. I would have failed. And that's the first reason John has written to us so that we can look at what Christ has done, not at what we've done because we failed. If we were looking at what we had done, we wouldn't make it. But we look at what Christ has done, and John's writing these things so we can look at what Christ has done and know without a doubt that because of what Jesus has done, it is finished, and I have eternal life. It's been paid for by him. Then the second reason, I told you John has two reasons for writing. The second reason John wrote this to us, he goes on to tell us in verse 13. He says that you may continue to believe in the name of the only begotten Son. Don't just put your faith in Him and then walk out the door of the church and never look back and go out and live for the world. But you believe in the name of the Son of God and you know you have eternal life and you continue to believe in the name. You continue to depend on Him. Guys, keep on hanging on to the truth of the gospel because the gospel of what Christ has done for you and me is not only how we're saved, but it's how we go on living the life of faith. This is how we grow in Christ. By always looking back to what Christ has done for us. And this is how we learn to love by always looking back to what Christ has done for us. And this is what's going to bring us all the way home as we cling to the truth of what Christ has done for us, like an anchor for our souls. It's never been about what we've done. Amen? It's always been and always will be about what Christ has done. Never be about what we've done. Always has been and always will be about what Christ has already done. It's finished. So that's who Christ has written. This is who John has written to. Those who believe, those who are depending on Jesus for their salvation, believing in Him alone, in Christ alone, and nothing else beside Him. This is what He's written, all these things throughout this book that we've studied from the beginning till now, but most importantly, what He's just been telling us about how Christ came, how He bled and He died for us, and the Spirit testified of it all. He testifies within your heart. And this is why, so that you may know because of what Christ has done, that you have eternal life and that you just keep on believing and trusting in Him. Amen? Let's stand. Let's be dismissed.